Hey, uh, hello again. Uh, this is Philip at TheBest3D.com and uh, welcome to another side note to uh, working with video. Uh, ultimately, of course, in order to bring it into Project Dog Waffles uh, PD Howler. Uh, what you're looking at here is a video that's now finally playing at the intended rate, uh, slow motion. Um, the original was much uh, faster. And uh, therein lies the problem is that if I look, this is the video that I recorded uh, with my LG4, uh, G4, the G4 from LG. Um, and when I play it on the LG4, I have control, depending on what player I use, I have control of how fast I want to play it. It was recorded to be playing in super slow motion. So it, it was, I think, eight times slower on the playback than the recording. And uh, so it, it recorded high speed and now it looks great when playing backwards slowly but when I transfer the file here on uh, to my PC uh, any of the players that I have so far seen such as the quick time player they ignore it right? they actually play it at the regular speed they skip uh, you know seven out of eight frames and they only play 30 frames a second uh, and that's not what I want I had this one recorded at uh, eight times faster uh, or basically at uh, you know for use in replay in slow motion so I should have in this file many more frames they are 1280 by 720 supposedly uh, but uh, the video players that I've tried so far cannot seem to play it back each every each and every frame so uh, my quest here is to find a way to actually get to these extra frames that are in the file uh, I've tried uh, some of the the free players, uh, uh, of course, uh, Windows Media Player and uh, QuickTime. I have QuickTime Pro, which is a great tool if you need to extract the frames, but it doesn't seem to do the job here with regard to identifying each of the frames from this track. So uh, here's what I did instead is um, I used uh, WinFF. Um, WinFF is a, a free um, software uh, sort of a front end uh, on top of uh, uh, FFmpeg, which is, uh, I think, open source, but it's definitely free as well. Uh, and so going to um, this download page uh, at winff.org, highly recommend it. Um, you get the latest version here, 154. I think it's been at that version for a little while, so it's, it's stable. It ha hasn't had the need for many updates. Maybe there will be some updates for, um, I don't know, something like um version uh, for, for windows 10 or something like that uh and then once uh, once i downloaded that i simply uh installed it and uh let me see if i have the view here there's another download still happening okay so just to walk you through that uh installing it let's get the newest version here and there you go oh, and actually I, I am currently running a version here so let me t turn this one off so we can actually install new one on top accept this this is from the fsf the free software foundation very reputable you may not need to read it it's still recommended once in a while to go through that exercise um, here's where we'll install it winff and uh, just take the defaults create a shortcut if you want one on the desktop and install all right so <coughs> with this software what you can do in fact let's launch it right away and what i'll do is i'll go to my folder right there and this is the video I know has the uh, slow motion recording. So I'm gonna go do that. And here are the settings that I'll use now as I'm converting to, uh, you know, it's uh, originally an MP4. <coughs> I'm gonna convert it to AVI <coughs> because that's the format I can use in PD Howler, right? I'll, eventually I'll want to go here, load AVI, All right? So uh, let's go to AVI format. Um, there are a couple of choices for the presets. Um, you could start with something like the widescreen or the widescreen anamorphic. I think that one worked too. Um, and then perhaps a, a couple of things. Okay, use the source folder for the target so we know it's going back into the same folder. Uh, and then take a look at the, the video. This is where the trick is. In order to get every one of the frames, what I did is I didn't put 30 frames per second here, right, as the frame rate. I said 240. So it's going to actually look for 240 frames for each second. And it's going to extract them all. 
uh, in the end, when you play him back with Windows Media Player or QuickTime, it still may skip him. It may, it still may only play uh, 30 frames a second, unless you go into the settings to, uh, if there is a way to set it to force it to play at 240 frames a second, and maybe then you can go and export it and convert it back to something else. But here is, I think, the trick that I had to use. You can actually use it. Uh, I think by default you want to keep the uh, same size. It may uh, reduce it. So if you wanted the same size. Certainly put it back to 720 <coughs> uh, vertically, uh, 720p. Uh, you could do two passes if you're in, a, uh, in need of really highest, best possible quality. You could set the bit rate. Uh, that one is probably in kilobytes, uh, you know, kilobits per second. So, uh, you know, if you want uh, six mega <coughs> megabytes per second, you would do about 6,000 kilobits per second. Um, that probably is a good value to be at for this size image. Uh, let's go and give that a try. Uh, audio, I don't have an audio track, so you could force it to zero. Um, you, I mean, there is an audio track, but you don't want it um, when you're going to work on just the visual. So let's go and convert it. Right? And so you may get some warning messages or error messages on something like the pixel aspect ratio. That's okay. A pixel is still a pixel in my books. It's going to be square. When we actually start displaying it, I don't care if it was on a slightly different aspect ratio initially at the recording. Uh, I mean, I know if, if, I, if I was a purist, it would matter. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do just whatever I need to get this video to work here. So um, that while this is uh, converting and saving, um, I'm going to uh, switch back to this. This is ultimately what we'll be loading through, load AVI. Um, and there is an earlier version I saved. There's a new one coming here that's still in, the, in progress. Uh, just to give you a look at what that's going to look like, uh, the dialogue gives you, um, you know, now there's like 1900 something frames over just about six or seven seconds, even if it's 10 seconds, I mean, five or six seconds times 240, that's right there, right? 2000 frames roughly. Uh, and you can tell it's moving slower than the, the full uh, the, the high speed version. Um, so that's, that's perfect. Now that may be too many frames depending on how much memory that'll take. So the thing you may want to do is just limit it to a particular area and say, okay, let's only take these two or 300 frames and that's that. And then so you can open that and load just those frames that you do care about. But the beauty of it, now you have a loaded animation that's uh, slowing it in slow motion. All right, let's do that one more time uh, with the other. This one is done now, so I'm gonna go exit out of this. Uh, this one's still there. And let's go here. We should find a new AVI file. And there it is. Um, probably this one. Let's go and view them. Uh, in a different way so we can see the details and see which one's the most recently updated. Uh, that's this one here. Yeah, still about the same size. Actually, I have different settings. I think last time I kept the audio track, so this one's a little bit smaller. Uh, there may be some other things. I didn't set the, the bit rate. This one I did. So, you know, the, the size might be different. Let's play it again. Um, it's not going to use every frame here. It's playing at probably 30 frames a second, at, like in real time. And that's really what you don't want necessarily. You want to be able to slow it down. Now, many of the media players that we use day to day, they may actually have some advanced settings. Uh, I'm just not familiar with them and I really don't need to see it. I need to work with it. So now what I'll do is uh, make sure I remember this one here. It's a 702, but there is a 801 in front of it. There's another one, this one here. Oh, there's an O underscore. Okay, so that's the one I need to load. Good. Okay, so let's go to, uh, maybe you can free the animation just to start from scratch. doesn't really ne need to be that way. Let's go store this image just so we have a little snapshot of this version. Uh, and then let's go and load the AVI, load AVI right there. And there is the O version. Let's see how that one looks. Uh, looks pretty good. Seems like it has the frames that we are uh, hoping to extract from it. Let's get something towards the end of the video this time. Uh, about 500 frames, about 352, why not? Let's do that. Okay. And so, <clears throat> as long as it fits in memory, um, we'll have, oh, 1900, no, 362 frames, 352 frames. Uh, and so now playing this back, you can see this is a slow motion of the original. And so, perfect solution 
um, problem solved, we can now work with the video in super slow motion uh, the way it was recorded on my LG uh, G4 smartphone. All right, and uh, we will use this, of course, uh, to create various scenes um, with some strange looking effects. Uh, in fact, let's just finish one here. Let's do, first of all, a little bit of a color adjustment. Um, adjust the, um, the curves, and then in the curves, get a little bit darker, and perhaps a little bit brighter here at the plateau. Something like this, a little bit more mystic looking. Right, and actually don't do that just on one frame, silly me. Let's do that on the entire frame sequence. So again, adjust curves and uh, animate this. Right. So now it's applying that to the entire sequence. And uh, so we could use this, for instance, to put this on, I don't know, a tile uh, that's going to be in a perspective view. Uh, we want to make sure it's um, uh, loopable, but also um, we want to make sure it is uh, tileable, so it has to be uh, um, uh, seamless. So let's go do that. In fact, let's let's make it a little bit smaller, just for the sake of time here. I'm going to go and resample that. I'm going to first reduce the number of frames a little bit. Uh, we maybe we don't need it at eight times slower. Maybe just four times slower is fine. So time stretch, we can go half the time, or we can do something in between, and we'll do some blended interpolation uh, or smoothing. Let's do 200 frames. Right, and with frame blending, and then we'll do uh, resample that, and uh, so that one will go down to uh, half the size. That's oops, not double the size, half the size, 640. There you go, and so now we have something we can experiment with a little bit faster, um, and that will give us um, something we want to. First of all, we want to make it uh, seamless, so that it can be tiled without seeing the seam and then we want to also do a couple of other things like make it loopable perhaps so it can be played non-stop and it keeps looping without a jump from the end back to the beginning let's make sure we store this also and um, so we we can quickly get back to it let's go now and image resample no first uh, make seamless right and see how much we want to overlap give it something like this so you can barely see the transition from one to the next duplicate copy or, or tile and so now you have a nice seamless uh, texture that's uh, also that we can also turn loopable so we can well first of all let's store this one because that's a nice one let's keep that one handy um, and then let's go and make loopable there you go now for make loopable you usually fade away some of the last 10 20 or 30 frames and then you fade in uh, basically that part will be cut off and overlap in the fading uh, with the first same number of frames. I'm going to go actually smack in the middle or more or less so uh, so we have an animation that's actually a little bit faster now but constantly blending the second half over the first half so you can't really tell um, that it is a the same animation um, kind of uh, jumping back to the beginning. And then the other thing you might want to do is actually uh, slow it down again. So right now we have the um, animation with just 114 frames. Let's say we wanted to slow it down some more. Right? This started as a slow motion recording. We sped it up a little bit, but let's say we wanted to actually do the other way. We want to uh, make it go even uh, slower. So one thing you can do now at that point, of course, is use our motion estimated interpolation, the motion prediction module. and what I'll do is I'll make it, uh, let's see, we are 640 by 4 uh, by 360, not too big, so we can probably go five or six times slower. Let's do about six tweens, uh, do a dry run, and uh, give it a good quality here. Let's give it one or two, so it's not going to do too much blending, but really more morphing. And because this is a very dynamic, changing image, uh, it's going to introduce quite a bit of noise, but that's fine. It's going to look like noise that's similar to this itself. So it's probably going to be just fine. Let's undo the scan for dropped frames. And we should have 673 frames afterwards. Uh, this is a nice little preview. If we cared about the quality, we could then uh, check the refinement pass and uncheck this to go. But I'm just going to go without the refinement pass in this case and then just go let it go. And uh, we will now then have a uh, much slower animation than our even our original was. So let's see. This is uh, essentially what I'm looking for, right? Is to to work with 
uh, this animation that we initially recorded and then be able to do stuff with it. Uh, like for instance, load this as, uh, store this as a animation uh, to disk and use it as the animated swap image so we can map it, color map it on top of a, a 3D scene. Or as I had suggested initially, we could go into the, the 3D perspective. Let's go here with the timeline editor. Uh, we are done with the motion prediction module. Uh, timeline editor, we can go to uh, the animation, uh, the transform section and find the 3D perspective. There it is. And so what we'll, what we'll do is um, um, uh, tile it here, or give it a little bit of a, of a, 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 a blend going from left to right. right. So we go here and then at the very end we're looking the other way something like that but while that's happening we also move and maybe we'll move it a bit like this so we kind of look into the direction that it's moving um, something like like this right keyframe that and go now there's a bit of texture noise along the edges where the pixels get really colliding or they, they compete for visibility. Uh, we don't do anisotropic filtering on that, but we can easily blend that into Oblivion by uh, combining some sort of a, a dark transition, fading it into dark or into bl bright or something like that. So let's not worry about that too much. We can always do some post on that as well. Uh, what I do want to do is add a little bit of a mystic vision, sort of uh, god rays, uh, some lights that are cast and they're cast from a light source that should be moving in the back so let's go do that uh, before we do that let's just have a look at quickly at this animation let's play it yeah we see we'll definitely want to fade away this dark area here or maybe crop it or, or uh, get rid of it to shorten the animation but here is this animation so far and then the next thing we'll do is um, go to the mystic vision that's one of the blur tools in the blur group there it is mystic vision and so you can see here let's give it a little bit more on the factor and on the quality uh, something like this okay so what I want to do is make it look like this light source or this whatever it is that's casting these uh, light rays uh, are is, is kind of slightly behind the level of this membrane it's kind of a wall and there's cracks in there Right, so we want it a little bit be, uh, on the right side here as we look to the left and then as we turn over to this side we want it to be coming more from the left so we need to do a little bit of a change in position for where that hot spot is where that that center spot is from where the light is is coming so we could do a keyframe here and then here we'll want it a little bit to the left and perhaps even longer and higher quality and uh, keyframe that so now you see something that looks a little bit like a, a, a nice nice correlation between the two movements. Uh, apply that and if you need it brighter apply it again. Right? Nothing wrong with applying the filter two, three, four times to see a cumulative increase in the brightness. Test it in between as soon as you have one rendering done. Uh, let's see here. Right. If you say, well, that's good, but maybe I like it uh, even stronger. Let's do another one. Apply once more. Same keyframes. Um, and you know, at some point, you'll say, okay, that's enough. Or we went too bright. And you have one level of undo here. So make sure we keep the save undo. That's saving it to disk. And it will have one level of undo. But if this one's still not too much, or if you think you can take one more, uh, let's do one more. And uh, at that point, we probably have the 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 effect we want we want, we don't want to wash it out too much we may need to do a little bit more of contrast now uh, perhaps a little bit more sharpen as well uh, so we could go to uh, this one here actually a soft contrast improvement sometimes that's just turning it too dark though so uh, make sure you don't overdo that uh, there's the filter sharpen for digital photo enhance that one certainly is going to be really nice uh, to bring the crisp a little bit out on the parts that are, that are supposed to be bright and shiny there, right? And then animate that. Um, and of course, that's also going to increase a bit the problem areas we see here. So we would probably want to uh, make sure we don't do too much of that. In fact, uh, once that's done, if you want to undo this, uh, since this most recent filter, I didn't actually do it uh, from inside the timeline editor. It doesn't save 
the undo information here. It doesn't save the prior frames. Only the ones that are rendered from the timeline editor benefit from that. But I still can I can still force it back to the prior rendering I had here. Right? If I decided I did two or three things too many and I want to undo them, I can still undo here and I'm now back to the level uh, where I had just two passes, not three of those. And maybe I'll say, well, that's actually fine. Uh, so one more thing I'd like to do, and that's to adjust the brightness once more. So I'm going to go to Adjust uh, Curves, and this time I'm going to uh, make it a little bit brighter, but not in the mid areas, only on the very bright ones. So let's reset it, and then just the very bright ones should be kind of shining a little bit more. Kind of a contrast enhancement, right? So these guys here should still be relatively dark. Or, or, or the way they are. Let's put it this way. All right, let's remap the colors that way. Now, this is something you can also then remap to a different color range if you have a, a gradient and you want to make it more look like, uh, I don't know, magma or light coming from hot rocks, uh, burning fires and that sort of things. Uh, so here's, uh, you know, the gateway to the, the sweep editor, for instance, where you can map it to something totally different. Right? Uh, so there's a couple of presets for, for different... Uh, colors like this one. So anything that's dark will map to the left side that's dark uh, will turn black actually. And then anything that's bright, these will uh, map to the brightest ones that we have here. And if it's getting bright too quickly, you can go to the value here and make it a little bit darker before it jumps up, right? Uh, something like this. Give it a little bit of a, a exponential curve or a parabola or something like that. So it gets mostly a dark tint for the most part here until it kind of plateaus uh, near the very end. Uh, and uh, you can also smooth this a little bit. And uh, and let's apply that. So we'll do filter, color, map to current gradient. And you can see that across the entire sequence. Now here is probably not the effect I wanted. Right? This is probably too dark, too much, uh, no contrast there, because everything is kind of flat in this area. So if I don't like it, well, let's go do this undo and go back to a step where I did like the result and perhaps, um, you know, do something different, something like this, and map that. Filter, color, oops, filter, color, map to current gradient. Yeah, there you go. That's a little bit better. All right, and uh, nothing wrong with doing some additional contrast improvements later on. Uh, for instance, the surface, uh, we do have a dark, kind of a, what's that, a uh, purple-red-ish thingy, magenta, combine it with um, vermilion, <laughs> dark colors, and we may want to have it even darker. So sometimes if you look at the expand dynamic range, uh, it might find even darker values for that particular hue. Uh, but that's probably about it, and, and really if you wanted to make it darker, you can certainly do so with the other filters, such as adjust the value, uh, where you do have also the, the contrast. There you go. And, and just a, a marvelous set of, of controls to bring it uh, into this range of lights where it, it's a bit more evocative of uh, a lava bed or you know, a, a, a volcanic eruption on the entire planet. In fact, I think that's what I'll do for the final. Uh, I'll turn this into a spherized appear. I'll put the spherized tool on it. And with the spherized tool, uh, this entire thing can then look like it's a planet ready to burst. Uh, so let's go to Filter Transform. Uh, spherize and uh, we probably don't need the specular highlight here we do perhaps need a little bit of let's see what do we need uh, a little bit more brightness or we need just the lights up here we need a lot more ambient there you go that will shine bright on this um, we can perhaps even spread some of these lights um, and and then at that point simply just animate that let's make it a little bit smaller too so we get more room if we want to add some more of those uh, Mystic Vision uh, effects. Uh, we can see some of that as well. All right, it's getting a bit blurry here because we already had the Mystic Vision before spherizing it. Uh, but it gives you an idea of, of how this could work. And, um, you know, add some more Mystic Vision afterwards. Um, let's see, where is it? Blur, Mystic Vision, and... Put the factor right there, quality, level, maybe not too much, 
and you could do, go a, a scary dark vision that's not the one here we want the light vision animate that and so it's applying that over the animation and we're getting another crystal ball so to speak here whole planet in motion very liquid appearance now all right well uh thanks so much i hope this was uh insightful and useful uh, if you're starting to work with uh, ultra high definition it's one thing but if you have the the high speed recordings of the videos uh, you don't want to be stuck with just one out of eight frames uh, you do want to be able to record and actually use the recorded sequences we have uh, such as this one here all right thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon in some more tutorials